Welcome to Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. And today we are putting a spotlight on our upcoming private market symposium on the healthcare and science and technology market, which is taking place on April 28th and 29th in Boston, Massachusetts. And to talk about this event, we have the organizer of the event, Aaron McLaughlin, uh, who you know and love as our private markets guru, the uh, host of the monthly private markets update, and really the person you want to go to if you have a question about anything related to the AE industry and the markets in which they operate. Aaron, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jeff. So this is great. This is this is interesting. Um, it's it's a really interesting marketplace because it is so it's diverse and at the same time it's it's just so important to the economy as a whole i mean nearly everything in our lives kind of surrounds technology biotech pharma just life sciences right and you know talking about how the engineering industry is working in these markets and holding an event that is really tailored to the people who are working in these markets um, and the clients they serve. I mean, how did the event come about, and you know why why the location? And 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 tell us a little bit more. Absolutely. Well, as um, some of our regular listeners may remember, we just started our private market symposiums series this past December. Uh, we kicked off then talking about intermodal and logistics in Charleston, South Carolina, because that was one of the hottest cities or regions in the country for that market. And of course, we have a supply chain to talk about and all of that good stuff. Well, you know, here we are coming out of a pandemic, coming out of a public, hopefully coming out of a public health emergency. And one of the other really hot markets, it's always been a stable market for design and construction services. but continues it, it was on my top five hottest list of last year based on design and construction spending is healthcare and science and technology which includes life sciences and yeah so you know to go to the hottest market in the country we had to go to boston slash came technically we're across the river in cambridge mm -hmm. right near kendall square um which is really you know the the heart of it in the u.s so you know, one of the ways that we track, and for those of our listeners that have read our private industry briefs, you know, we try to track funding because that's how we know who's got money and who can be, you know, really good clients and have some money to spend on, on design services and on new facilities. And, you know, one way we track that is through um, NIH funding and venture capital funding, which are the two major ways that a lot of life sciences and healthcare institutions get their money. So, you know, the Boston area consistently ranks number one, you know, in those kinds of rankings. So we're kicking it off there. Hopefully we'll get to do this again in a year or so and, and we'll hit maybe Northern California, which, which yep. comes in second in that area. And of course there's lots of areas in the United States that have really hot um, markets. Here in the, the greater Washington region, we have the 270 corridor that comes up from um, from where NIH is headquartered in Bethesda. Down in Raleigh-Durham, you have the Research Triangle. So we know there's really hot markets all over the country. We're starting with Boston and Cambridge, but we are talking about national trends. Yeah. And yeah. we're really gonna hit on you know, a lot of the really important national trends and also what makes the healthcare and science and technology market different than some of the other markets that our engineering firms work in. You know, it's an interesting thing because of course, Boston, you know, it's home to some of the most prestigious educational institutions in the nation. Of course, you've got, you know, Harvard, Yale and MIT, of course, you know, right there in that little cluster. Um, which, you know, of course, you have that concentration of, of, of focus in the sciences, life sciences and technology. But um, as you mentioned, you know, the Reacher's Triangle in North Carolina, you've got, of course, the pharmaceutical community in, in, in kind of the, the New Jersey region and outside of Philadelphia, which is another kind of hot spot. But uh, I was reading an article um, this week from uh, about uh, New York City coming out of the pandemic, uh, talking about the uh, 
the fact that they're still dealing with the fact that there's a lot of empty office space. And Eric Adams, the mayor, started talking about um, really re you know, rethinking what the office space is used for. And one of the things they actually talked about was how do we actually take some of this office space that's not coming back and convert it into technology incubators or biotech facilities um, to try to attract um, some of that work. Some, some traffic and some tra revenue. Yeah, yeah traffic absolutely. Traffic and revenue. Yeah, yeah. By, yeah, by by investing in that, which, you know, if that happens, that's right. a that's an amazing opportunity for our, our, our it member is. firm. I mean, New York City's been trying to steal the life science and biotech companies from Boston and New Jersey forever. No, yeah. but, but yes, you know, one of the things that makes this sector really um, interesting, obviously very attractive to economic development folks and mayors is that, first of all, there is a lot of money and growth in yeah. the healthcare and the science and technology market. So um, in 2022, FMI projects that $51 billion will be spent on design and construction, and that is up. So it was one of the top five markets last year growing. And the other thing is, and, and Jeff, you and I chatted about this right before we pressed record, is that in this in this world when we're all talking about working from home and mm -hmm. hybrid workplaces, you know, there are a lot of sectors, yeah. and those are our clients, where that is not going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Where people have to go into a hospital or a medical facility or a life sciences laboratory to do their work. And yeah. it's really wonderful that our members, through their engineering and architectural services that we get to serve a lot of these folks, including some who have been our heroes during this pandemic, yeah. you know, by designing, you know, touch free workplaces, high tech workplaces, um, areas that are clean that in the future will be able to handle possible can contagions differently. And so, you know, it's a growing market. It's mm -hmm. a market where the employees have to go to work. There's going to be a yep, spend yep. on facilities, and you know it's a market that I think a lot of our members that are that are in it, and of course there's a lot of our member firms that want to be in it, um, and we will cover all of that at the symposium. But we can actually feel really good about um, who you're working for. So yeah, absolutely, and, and there are a lot of firms that are interested in in getting involved if they're not already in this marketplace. Um, one thing that I've note, uh, is, one thing of note is that the uh, the AC Re ACEC Research Institute's recent uh, sentiment business sentiment study, you know, asked uh, a pool of firm leaders about what they're optimistic about, and the good news is overall the industry is extremely optimistic. Yes. Um, but when they looked at uh, sentiment by sector, pretty much twelve months from now, um, and you know, now versus last quarter and kind of like, what are, what are you seeing about uh, 12 months from now? You know, number two is healthcare facilities. I mean, that, that, that had a plus four positive rating in sentiment um, from 30. And, and Jeff, I can tell you why. Yeah. And very briefly, it's because demographics, Yeah. you know, just like with the housing industry, when we've talked about that in, within our commercial and residential sector, you know, one of the main reasons that healthcare in particular is going to be so strong moving forward is that, and I'm not, I do not have this statistic in front of me, so I do not know if it's exact, but basically, folks over a certain age, say 60, 65, go to the doctors like 14 times more than everybody else yeah. in their 20s yeah. and 30s. So, and they, you know, with the advent of telehealth, of course, maybe your first appointment is, you know, over some sort of a Zoom-ish platform, but essentially you have to go in, you, you have, have to get your blood drawn, you have to go yeah. through tests. So, you know, with the baby boomer generation being so large and with that generation retiring and entering their, you know, 60s and 70s, they are all going to go to the doctors a lot yeah. more. Now we're seeing a change in the kind of facilities, you know, in the design and the size and the location of a lot of those facilities. And that trend, sort of the the retailing of healthcare has been going on for some time. But the actual need for it um, is really comes down to demographics. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and your your point is absolutely right. I mean, there's there's no 
there's no shortage of demand, um, and that's that's just going to grow over time. Um, and and my understanding is, I mean, when when engineering firms do get engaged in these projects, it's 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 a, it's a pretty marquee project to get involved in. I mean, these are these are complex projects requiring a lot of bespoke engineering and design work. There there are there are levels of precision and, right. that need to be reached. So for firms to um, secure projects like this and 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 perform. Um, it really shows how good they are at, at whether it's MEP work, whether it's, you know, it, it's the, the, your, your structural or what have you, it shows exactly how on point, you know, your firm is in this, in this, in this right. market. Yeah. Healthcare and science and technology life sciences work is definitely very unique. And, you know, you touched on one factor that makes it very unique is MEP you know, sort of the necessary for, you know, um, mechanical and electrical systems that really can handle the load of a, especially a mm -hmm. hospital. You know, we're not building hospitals as much necessarily as we used to, but when we do, they use a lot of energy. So I have a, a great statistic here, Energy Star, um, which is the U.S. agency that helps track this, says that healthcare organizations spend $6.5 billion a year on energy, you know, and that doesn't even include water. And, mm -hmm. you know, because of the need to use a water to clean, if nothing else, hospitals and medical facilities use a great deal of water. So, you know, I would say the biggest trend, which we have touched on in our private market analysis at ACEC and which we're certainly going to go pretty deep in when we meet up in Boston is how we as an industry are going to help our healthcare and science and technology clients with designing their facilities and their campuses and their infrastructure to reduce that energy demand. Yeah. Because, you know, when states and localities and corporations, including healthcare corporations say, oh, we're going to be net zero, mm -hmm. we're going to be carbon neutral. You know, that is a really, really big push that's yeah. necessary for this kind of client type. And, you know, we have a couple really interesting speakers, including folks from the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, because they are doing sort of a, um, a pilot project with Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is one of the largest hospitals in the country, largest campuses, hospital operators in the country. So, you know, it'll be really interesting to hear that case study and also, you know, what else is happening in that space so that our members can sort of learn from that and hopefully take that back to their clients mm -hmm. or see an opportunity that may not exist, you know, where they're located. Yeah. So, you know, that energy consumption and then and the need to um, bring that down is um, is definitely of, of primary concern. Yeah, without question. I mean, we've seen this, um, I mean, just this week. Uh, it's something that we are in the process of really exploring and digging into, and it, of course, it deals a lot more of public publicly traded companies than it does with uh, a lot of the clients that we would be talking about here in in this space. But just with the SEC rule that came out regarding um, emissions reporting, uh, with uh, uh, you know scope right. one, two, and three, yeah. and tying that back to ESG and the fact that you know, these companies uh, are, are really focused on their ESG scorecards and the life sciences and, and, and the science and technology industries, I think above all, are very, very focused on showing not only the level of care that they, you know, give to their patients and from the hospital side, but then also, you know, what the hospital is doing in energy production and, and how much of a uh, environmental footprint does it have. Right. So, bringing in engineers to assist in reducing that footprint or assisting them in, in working towards uh, whether it's all the way to net zero or to somehow lower their impact. I mean, that, that alone is, is, is its own little pocket industry within this. Yeah. I mean, so many healthcare uh, organizations as well as pharmaceutical companies and others are publicly traded. Yep. Not that these forthcoming uh, rules won't apply to 
almost any kind of firm because yeah. there's a supply chain, supply et cetera, chain. et cetera. So the scope um, three emissions or the supply chain and partners. Right. So it's certainly going to impact very soon, you know, nearly every kind of company. Mm -hmm. And I think the engineering and architectural community is in a great position, obviously, to work with our clients to try to help them meet their goals. Yeah. But now the fact that we have to measure certain goals and it's really part of a almost financial accounting system type of arrangement is really a paradigm shift. Yeah. Uh, earlier this week, I was at the the NABE conference, the National Association for Business Economics. You know, and we had Jerome Powell speak and we had so many different interesting topics, but one of the main topics, because this rule came out on Monday, the proposed rule was this, you know, this, ESG and environmental sort of scoping regulation. Mm -hmm. So I think that it will be really critical for our, for our industry to understand that, but in large part also to help our clients meet their goals. Yeah. So let, let's talk about the event itself, because mm -hmm. the way that you have this structured again, you know, unlike a lot of events that are these cattle call kind of huge things where you have uh, hundreds of people coming in and you have just, you know, panels and, and, and after a panel, you have very little interaction. Right. You've designed this uh, uh, symposium to be very focused on um, getting actionable and useful information and actually networking with your peers or, or potential clients. Yes. So yeah, how is it organized and, and, and what do you hope that people get away, get, get from this event when they attend? Absolutely. So all, our whole event um, takes place at uh, the Royal Sinesta Hotel in Cambridge, right across the river from Boston. And we start Thursday night with a networking cocktail hour. So, you know, our member firms can meet each other. Non-members mm -hmm. are invited too. Our speakers and panelists are invited. And then the following day, we run basically from breakfast through lunch. And we, this is not a big event. So, you know, before we sell out, I encourage folks to go ahead and register because yeah. we do cap it so that, and I won't name the other folks that throw these kind of events in our greater industry, but you know, this is not a cattle call. We're not gonna have hundreds of people in a ballroom. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not what this is. And so, you know, we are going to be able to interact with our speakers, to ask questions. We have some breaks built in and get to really dig deeper in the issues yeah. and also be able to, you know, part of being in the engineering and architectural spaces, you know, as a former business development director, we build teams and we propose as a team. And so, you know, meeting your team members or prospective teaming partners, and mm -hmm. then also, you know, meeting and hearing from clients is the goal, Yeah, is, yeah. is the goal. And, you know, digging deep into issues like energy, um, and designing a post-pandemic world, uh, you know, designing for carbon neutral and climate, all of that will be covered. And, you know, it will be very, very exciting. We're going to yeah. hopefully get, get to Boston when it's warmer outside, but before the, the, before the college graduation starts. Yeah. So we're right. there that the very last that. Thursday evening and Friday in yeah. April. Yes. Well, it's, it's a great time to do it. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, another example of the work that uh, you're doing and your team's doing to really put a put a spotlight on the private market side of things, um, you, the the symposiums, of course, and then you have the briefs, which are extremely useful and informative, and then the the monthly updates as well. So, it's it's a it's another great offering from ACC and and and, and to our members and non-members alike. And again, uh, that that early bird, we do have an early bird kind yes. of pricing uh, that ends on March 30th. So right around the corner uh encourage everyone to go up onto the website acec.org go up to business resources and you're going to see uh private markets listed there and uh you'll see a direct link to the symposiums and uh all the information you need uh agenda logistical information and pricing is all up there do recommend that you go up and take a look the link will be in the show notes uh, of this episode, of course, uh, and uh, you know we we expect it to be a great event. I mean, it's 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 a really interesting market that uh, needs to be explored. Yes, I look forward to seeing our members and others there at the end of April. 
Well, uh, we will be looking forward to it. And Aaron, thank you again for uh, joining us. Uh, and uh, look forward to our next update, economic update for uh, for coming up for uh, for for of all things April. I can't believe we're almost to April already. Uh, but until then, this has been Engineering Influence podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies, and we will see you next time. Thank you.